Welcome to the May edition of Town Topics. I'm your host, Amanda Thompson, and I'm here with First Selectman Jim Hayden. How are you? I'm terrific. How are you? I'm doing great. Good afternoon. So we're into, we're taping this on uh, May 14th, and we've already had nine days of rain. <laughs> yes. Uh, and in uh, the 30 days of April, we had 22 days of rain. Now we need the rain, and you know, it's always good for, you know, 70% of our community is on well water, and yeah. that's all good from that perspective. But it'd be nice to get a couple sunny days that aren't necessarily in the 40s. Yes, well, so. hopefully it's saving up for Memorial Day weekend or, or something. Yeah. We'll have a nice weekend. Yeah, yeah that would be good. So we've been able to tie up some things. The referendum vote just happened a week ago? Two weeks yeah. ago? Yeah, no, yeah. one week ago. You're right. Wow. <laughs> you're just talking about how things go by fast. Yeah. You know, so it doesn't that. So just to let everybody know what the uh, results were, in case you haven't seen it on the website, um, the uh, annual budget uh, was a total of $23,283,000, of which 600000 was for the capital reserve fund, 853000 for debt service, Sixteen million nine hundred eighty thousand dollars for the general uh, for I'm sorry for the Board of Education, and four million eight hundred fifty thousand dollars for the general government. Um, there was a uh, a total of seventeen percent of the uh, folks that were eligible to vote came out, uh, which is a disappointing number. Uh, Three hundred and eighty nine voted for the budget, and two fifty nine voted against. So it was. Uh, it was like a 60-40 spread. Yeah. So that the 60-40 spread uh, means that the the Board of Finance, uh, you know, certainly taking the input of the community and of the mm -hmm. boards, uh, uh, came up with a number that the town, town was willing to afford, and that's that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, not so good thing is you know 83 percent of the town Didn't did not know. vote. So, what is it, it normally like in the twenties? Yeah, it's 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 uh, the, it's the first time I remember it being less than twenty. Okay. Uh, and uh, you know the uh, three town topics uh, in a row. We talked about the budget coming up in the process. Right. Uh, the boards are televised. Board of selectmen, board of finance are televised. Mm -hmm. uh, the special edition of Let's Talk Turkey came out. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, this year uh, we decided to mail postcards out to everyone mm -hmm. to let them know about the referendum. There's signs up. There's um, you know several signs. You know five, six, seven signs up, along with two stationary signs. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so I guess the the good part is th is that people didn't show didn't vote that weren't informed on the issues. The bad thing is, is how many people were informed on the issues, yeah. and uh, you know, with all those things that I just mentioned, uh, that we did as outreaches to get the mm -hmm. information out to people. Um, I can get you to the water, but I can't make you drink. Right. Uh, I think the opportunities uh, were there for people to educate themselves on the budget. Mm -hmm. Certainly, with, I didn't even mention all the meetings right. uh, where people, uh, you know, there was a town meeting that you could have asked questions for uh, at, and, and received the information. There was, uh, before that, there was the town budget hearing held by the Board of Finance at the high school. Um, so there's there's lots of information out there. There's lots of ways to access it. Uh, I'd like to see a representative democracy where more people came out just to uh, you know say what they wanted, mm -hmm. um, yes or no. Uh, obviously, uh, right. uh, you know I, I I think the town budget at a 1.5 percent increase with some of the things that we're doing was a reasonable, responsible budget. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, people who know me know that you ask me a question, I'll answer it. You know, mm -hmm. so talk to me about the budget. Talk to me about why it is that there wasn't any interest. Mm -hmm. uh, is there things that you know, other opportunities that we can do to get the information? But right. you come all the way down the line, and there's still personal responsibility of the individuals that live in this town and work in this town and pay taxes in this town and you have personal responsibility it, you know i can't um we, we don't have door-to-door -door service regarding these things 
uh, hey, tell me how I can do it. Uh, uh, so it's up to the personal responsibility of people to, to uh, learn about it and go ahead and participate in the process. Right. We are a participating democracy and that's what we want. Mm -hmm. Whatever the results are, we'll live by the results and mm -hmm. we want more people involved uh, yeah. on the referendums. You know what's really funny is, is you have, uh, and I didn't intend on going on this rant, but you can tell I really, uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm very passionate about right, this. Right, yeah, that's a 17% is a low number. And, you know, the, um, you, you know, we do 85, 80, 85% turnout for the president, uh, mm -hmm. presidential election. I'm making the numbers up, but let's say that there's 150 million people that can vote. So you're one of 150 million mm -hmm. state election. You're one of 3,500,000. Mm -hmm. One of 3,500,000. You're one of 3,765 voters. You have the most impact with your vote at the mm -hmm. local level, mm -hmm. and it's the lowest turnout percentage. Yeah. It is interesting. And probably. So, does the Board of Finance take some of those things into consideration? I mean, I don't know how much they could, but as far as like if it's a really close vote or if they have a good voter turnout, does that give them any barometer of, you know, what they should be doing for the following year? If, if like the community was happy with what they, what their final numbers well, were? Well, there's, there's, I mean, there's a couple initial responses. Um, folks my age remember the football coach Bill Parcells. And Bill Parcells, uh, you know, did uh, several teams, but you know, I'm a Giants fan, so I remember him as the coach of the Giants that yeah. took us to a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And um, Bill Parcells says, "You are what your numbers say you are." Mm -hmm. So you can have the best team on paper, and you're still what your numbers are. You won or lost, you're, you're what your numbers are. Yeah. So the decision is whatever the numbers are. Mm -hmm. I think what the Board of Finance would want to do is, is they would you know, take this vote and say, okay, it was 60% for and 40% against. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the best numbers that they have. Right. As a board, as a first selectman, as a board of selectmen, we may say, you know, we've done the referendum for 10, 11 years. Mm -hmm. We've had increasing, uh, uh, increasingly decreasing results. We've, uh, <laughs> the uh, uh, decrease every uh, in the last five years, mm -hmm. but specifically the last two or three years, there's been less and less people coming. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for 150 years, the town of East Granby used to pass its budget by town meeting. Maybe mm -hmm. that's. Maybe that's yeah. something that the Board of Selectmen has a discussion about. Okay. Uh, and, and certainly if we keep the uh, if we keep the process the way it is now, where it's a referendum, um, so the Board of Selectmen say, hey, this is an important issue, it's mm -hmm. difficult economic times, let's make sure the maximum amount of people can vote on this. Because of the time we did get 50, 60, 70 people, right. we still did end up with uh, 600 and some odd people, right. uh, uh, voters. So, but you, you know, you take a look and say, okay, you know, what is it that, that we we want to do? And mm -hmm. then you go ahead and you know you, you, you say, all right, if we're going to keep the referendum, maybe it's 12 day. Yeah. Maybe it's not six in the morning until eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things, and there'll be a lot of discussion, and we'll ask for for feedback and, and that sort of stuff from the various boards. But the other thing that um, the board of selectmen does for the uh, for the Board of Finance is if it's a no vote, uh, mm -hmm. they need to know, and those have happened uh, over the years, they, um, they, they need to get a, a sense or an idea of, mm -hmm. of what the town is thinking. So we as a Board of Selectmen have uh, got non-binding questions that people vote on, questions mm -hmm. two and three. And um, the uh, you know is the four four point eight million dollar general government actually four million eight hundred fifty thousand dollar, or an increase of uh, one point five percent or two seventy two percent the right amount too low or too high. Three hundred thirty four people says right amount, uh, eighty six said uh, too low, and two hundred thirteen said too high. It was a total of six hundred and thirty three folks because fifteen or sixteen didn't bother to do okay. the advisory questions. So the um, so you look at that and you say okay, 52% of the town said it's the right amount. Mm -hmm. uh, if you add the two lows in there, which means that they would be satisfied with the budget, 
then it's 66 percent, and then mm -hmm. too high is would be 33.64 percent. The board of ed budget um, is 16 million 980 thousand, increase of 2.3 percent, or 380 thousand dollars. The right amount too low or too high. Right amount was 197. Too low was 137. Too high was 634. So you know, th I know the board of finance takes those things into considerations. Mm -hmm. And they will take that in consideration next mm -hmm. year uh, as they're, they're looking at the results. But uh, usually it's a new set of uh, drivers and a new set of concerns and right. a new set of uh, uh, budgets are nothing more than balancing priorities and the affordability thereof. Yeah. So um, at this point, uh, they will move on and we'll continue them into the process. But the budget okay. did successfully pass and um, it is now going to take effect July 1. All right. So what is the plan for the fiscal year 2020, right? That's what it is? Uh, fiscal year 20, correct. Uh, <laughs> so uh, sometimes people get confused when you say FY20. So we have all gotten in the habit of saying FY 1920. But it's yeah. uh, because you're in 19, how yeah, could I be in 20? But, but it, you know, it ends in, FY, in fiscal year calendar year 2020, mm -hmm. so that's why it's called that way. So the, um, the property tax uh, increase uh, overall is 2.61% um, with the finished budget. Uh, the uh, state grants, uh, we're expecting to get 3.39% less, or roughly uh, a, um, let's see, about $40,000 less. Uh, the state grants are going to be tricky this year because the state grants might, uh, it looks like uh, the bill that came out of the appropriations a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago gave us more, uh, more educational cost sharing aid uh, than the governor's budget did. So it depends on what happens at the uh, first week of June when they, they finalized the budget. Mm -hmm. So the state grants we're not sure about. And the other effect is we're still not sure about pensions. The pensions did not make it out of the appropriations. Well, may, uh, but then the appropriations chair said we made a t clerical error. We meant to have the pensions in there. Finance, which is, so those are the two uh, relevant commissions or committees mm -hmm. in the legislature. The uh, What they do is, you know, so expenditures, the spend side, mm -hmm. and the tax side or the money side is the revenue, mm -hmm. and the finance is the revenue side, and the finance uh, folks uh, said not in our equation. So they think what's going to happen is that perhaps uh, towards the end, uh, and the total cost is $73 million. Um, that they can transfer to the towns and mm -hmm. it burdens our property tax, which is one reason why I don't think sharing the pensions is a good idea. Mm -hmm. But the uh, but it's a complicated su subject, and the long and short of it is is that the way the Board of Finance dealt with the grants, if we get a higher grant, but we get a bill for the 25% of the teachers' pensions, they act the mm -hmm. teachers' pension then there's still money in the budget. So okay. they, they took it off of the revenue side from the grants, but they did account for it. So if we do have to pay pensions, they, the money is in the current budget that was passed by the town. Okay, so we're ready for that? We're ready for that eventuality. Um, we're, uh, just to let you know about the total. So the total revenue on this budget is $23,283,000. Um, 362,000 of that uh, was the use of cash balance. Uh, last year it was 568,000, so we're using less of the cash balance or the reserve fund or mm -hmm. the rainy day fund, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah. People call it all the above. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, other town revenue was $352,000. So you add it all together and that uh, comes up to the $23,283,000. The budget for education was uh, 16 million 980 for the ed for education, as I mentioned, 2.3 percent increase. Mm -hmm. General government was an increase of, of 72,000 or 1.51 uh, percent, and the, that budget will uh, will fund us changing the management structure 
at uh, parks, uh, I'm sorry, at uh, public works and right. at the buildings uh, and grounds mm -hmm. so that we'll have a different management structure right. and we're looking to do more and more things ourselves, less with vendors on the town side, but also we provide roughly $300,000 worth of services to the schools and we're going to try to do more on the school side, mm -hmm. sticking primarily outside the, uh, the building itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the exteriors of the building and the grounds, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, if we can help save uh, some money by having some of our DPW workers that have good skill set on mm -hmm. patching roofs, then mm -hmm. we'll, do, we'll do that. Uh, right. Or on doing some some things inside that would be helpful, even though the Board of Ed budget is still responsible for the interior. Mm -hmm. If we can do something to save money, we certainly would we'll want to, to do, do that. that. We would yeah. certainly do that. Uh, so the and then the debt service um, was six hundred seventy thousand dollars last year is eight hundred fifty three thousand this year, and that's uh, the all I'm sorry it's the all Grove Seymour uh, project uh, mm -hmm. from two thousand twelve, of which we took in two thousand thirteen I think we took a fifteen year note out on, mm -hmm. and then it also indicates the interest only of the money that we're going to borrow in the first year, and then next year there'll be a similar debt payment number. Um, because we temporarily borrow, borrow money. Uh, think of it uh, like uh, you're using your cash equity and mm -hmm. your mortgage. So a mortgage would be the equivalent of a bond. Okay. So it's a fixed payment over 15 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and we go to bond market once we have the opportunity to get most of the projects done. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's a five-year uh, road project, so we're not mm -hmm. going to wait five years to go to bonds. Uh, but mm -hmm. we figure within the first year or two, um, the roofs would be all done. Hopefully the air conditioning would be done at, mm -hmm. over at all roof. So we'd be able to uh, to go out for permanent bond. So yeah. we're paying interest only right now. So we, we're looking to borrow in mid-July on a one-year basis, about $6 million. That mm -hmm. will help us with the cost of the roof and the roads and everything else. And then we'll do a similar amount next year, and then we'll do the permanent bond for what the uh, bond from what the town authorized, which was roughly ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just a little bit about the financial picture uh, uh, picture, and that shows up right now. The effect of that project shows up on debt repayment, smaller increment, mm -hmm. and then there'll be another uh, uh, debt payment, smaller, a little bit larger increment next year, and then there will be the full weight of the of the uh, permanent bond, uh, mm -hmm. which would be you know the seven hundred thousand dollar range mm -hmm. uh, for annual payments. So okay. it's uh, the board of finance chose to step into it so that you yeah. didn't all of a sudden go from feast to famine, mm -hmm. where all of a sudden you know you you, you know you had uh, six hundred seventy thousand dollars worth of debt payment, and then the following year you go into a million three. Right. Um, so well, you know, and, and I made those numbers up, but mm -hmm. we're. We're, we, we're stepping into it. It's good to go over that, though, because I'm sure it gets confusing to people about why we're not getting that bond now. Right. So right. we'll keep talking about that. And we will. Yeah, and we <laughs> will. And the financial uh, advisors, the bond advisors, the attorneys, uh, traditional mm -hmm. municipal practice, best practices okay. are to do it this way. Yeah. That makes sense, but yeah, you kind of forget, like say, two years down the road, you're like, well, why are we doing this? Didn't we do that two years ago? It's like, well, yes, but you pay it off. But we're paying, chunks. you were paying it off in chunks, and the large mm -hmm. chunk will be three years from now. Right. Or two full years, mm -hmm. I yeah. should say. So, so do you want to talk a little bit about the, the progress, or like, so some of the roads have been done, the town center, Part of it has been done. And yes, the, um, we uh, never thought that uh, the Board of Selectmen uh, didn't feel comfortable doing the town campus parking lots uh, when we were looking at $150,000, $200,000 worth of paving every year. Mm -hmm. And we put the money on purpose into the uh, neighborhoods where we could or across mm -hmm. roads where we could, East Street. For example, yeah. Holcomb before that, mm -hmm. um, and, and and we thought that was prudent. Uh, but we also were holding our breath because the 
they, there was, you know, we would patch the potholes and then you're patching the patch <laughs> yes. uh, and trying to keep the parking lot safe and everything. So once we received the, the bonds, and by the way, all along we said, hey, we're going to be doing 22 miles worth of roads and that yeah. will also include the town campus. Right. So Which this is, is great. I mean, we want to have a good looking center of our community. So Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We, we yeah. as residents take pride in our community uh, and uh, we want our, our parking lots to be safe but also mm -hmm. reflect the pride of the community mm -hmm. being well maintained. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be fancy, it just needs to be well maintained. Yeah, so, well, and also just with the community center, the senior center, making sure it's safe absolutely. for them getting in as absolutely. well. Yeah. I mean, you know, so many people come to the uh, town hall, many, many more people go to the uh, community center, various functions, mm -hmm. and the library. So we, um, so anyways, we, uh, the first uh, thing we actually started to pave, uh, we started to do the work here, mm -hmm. but we actually paved uh, half of the town recycling center, otherwise affectionately known as the dump. Oh, yes, I saw we, that. We paved the dump road and we, did, we did the second section of it uh, two weeks ago or a week and a half ago. So we, we did that. Uh, we also did, as you mentioned, where it's not quite finished, but mm -hmm. the weather, those nine days out of 13, 14 days that have rained haven't helped us with paving. Yeah. But in the next week, we anticipate to be finished with the Senior Community Center parking lot, and then Center Street will be paved, and Memorial mm -hmm. Drive will be paved. So you know, week, 10 days, we hope to be out of that process. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we've already uh, paved Seymour Road, and mm -hmm. a big change on Seymour Road is we also, uh, at the same time, have discussed uh, how the community was looking for not having through trucks go through there and we were able to uh, go to the state of Connecticut and traffic authority and we were able to get them to agree and Windsor helped us with that because mm -hmm. International Drive which is what the street is in Windsor, but it's right. you know continuation of Seymour. They had to sign off on it, and they did. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, when we had the nice Bram Frank and Lou uh, clean road, we also put up the signs that we got the approval from. Mm -hmm. So it's not for for any through trucks. So what it is 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 the folks that are doing business, the trucks that are doing business in Windsor, yeah. and, and and most of the of the International Drive is in Windsor. A little bit is in East Granby, right off of Route 20, mm -hmm. where Domino's is, and a couple right. other, of yeah. the larger warehouses. They just need to go to Route 20 instead of going mm -hmm. to Route 187 because whether it's Seymour Road with the condos or whether it's Seymour with the with uh, uh, I'm so, uh, sorry, Spoonville with with uh, with all sorts of residents. Mm -hmm. You know, about 35, 40 percent of the town lives in that area. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of community input saying, "Hey, can we do something about these trucks? We're not against commerce. We're not against truck drivers. We're mm -hmm. not against trucks. Mm -hmm. um, and especially every time the truck went down the Seymour Road." Prior to the paving, mm -hmm. there you know it was very rough and uneven. Yeah. So at three in the morning, somebody's getting woken up by mm -hmm. the truck hitting you know a pothole or right. an uneven or just uh, breaking down that hill or, or breaking or, or or accelerating going up. Mm -hmm. So the uh, so anyway, we listened to the community and we we got that road designated. So anyways, that road is paved. Uh, Spoonville Road will be, uh, you know, we're looking to do uh, in the next couple of weeks, uh, if the weather helps us, uh, we'll start to, uh, uh, re to mill and take off part of the surface and pulverize where we need to pulverize. We'll still make it so that it'll be one way where, you know, mm -hmm. folks will still be able to to drive up and down, but they mm -hmm. might be driving on the wrong side of the road yeah. uh, on purpose because we'll have flaggers there that mm -hmm. will you know, stop people on one yeah. side and start people on the other side. Mm -hmm. So we anticipate uh, doing um, doing that uh, road within the next couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, we purposely started with the toughest things first. Mm -hmm. uh, Seymour Road is a busy road. Yeah. Um, town Campus is a busy area, mm -hmm. uh, and Spoonville is, is a busy area. So we're we're um, we're we're going through and we're doing that. In addition to that, we're uh, looking at some got my little list here. We're looking at it's uh, at the roads that are rated poor. Uh -huh. uh, see more Spoonville. We've already done. Uh, we're looking at uh, Bradley Park Road and International Drive, Newgate Road. We've already done the town complex. 
We're looking at other roads throughout the town. Um, just because I say the name doesn't mean that it's going to happen next week. Yeah. Uh, it could happen in November uh, if the paving season goes that long. Yeah. Or if we're, we get another 60 days of rain. Uh, <laughs> we, or if we get another 60 days of rain. <laughs> so uh, this isn't necessarily um, a ironclad, but I just want to give people ideas of some of the roads that we're looking to do this year. Uh, we're looking to do Wincairn, Wincourt, Valley View, Stark, Tuckahoe. Um, Tuckahoe, Seneca, Mays, uh, Broken Arrow. Uh, you know, if I say just one street, usually if it's in a neighborhood, it's we're doing those. Other, we're doing mm -hmm. the others too. Um, Southwood, Mount Vernon, Woolcut, and Floydville. We're looking to probably do chip sale, which will help stretch out those roads for another 10 years before we have to pave them. Uh -huh. So this is a road pavement, but also a road maintenance project over mm -hmm. the next five years. We're doing 22 miles worth of roads. Uh, we're, uh, we added Connecticut South uh, Drive, which is in the industrial area to that, because mm -hmm. uh, the last couple storms of the winter or it wasn't even the winter, the, of the early spring, yeah. um, caused the road to break down even more where we won't be able to pave that, uh, plow that road. Oh, uh, so nice. we're gonna pave that. So anyways, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of uh, streets uh, on here. If you didn't hear your street uh, and you're, it's a poor road, it mm -hmm. means that we're gonna be getting to you uh, later this year, or if you didn't hear in the list, the next year or the year after. Mm -hmm. But we're being very aggressive. We're looking to do $2 million worth of paving this year mm -hmm. out of the total 7.1 million that was authorized. We're very mm -hmm. aggressive and we're trying to get things, and we're doing it over a five year period so that we can do a lot of the work ourselves with mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, taking the curb now, putting the catch basins in, you mm -hmm. know, all those sorts of things. Yeah. Um, but uh, the other thing is, is you know, we don't want all the roads to become due 20 years from now. Right. You know, so if we have, we can space it out a little, we can space it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, that will certainly be helpful. So yeah. that's a little bit of where we are on the roads, on the on the roofs. Uh, we uh, sorry about that. The, on the roofs, um, we uh, are still looking to do all roof in the middle school and high school uh, roof replacement uh, during the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a whisker thin margin right now. Uh, we, uh, this, you know, the state um, has a process where you have to go through, and they, you know, then they you know, they send it back to the application mm -hmm. back to us uh, as oh you you didn't put this on mm -hmm. and we said well you didn't tell us we had to put it on because the state because it's the schools they There's give the school some reimbursement funding. for okay. the school uh, forty point seven one percent of the school project will be reimbursed by the okay. state and that's you know one and a half one about a one and a half million dollars that yeah. we're going to get from the state towards mm -hmm. the project so the uh, so anyways uh, we're uh, we officially put the notice in for bid on Owl Grove and on the middle school and high school okay. yesterday uh, and uh, uh, on the uh, administrative services website for the state and it'll be in tomorrow's paper. So we anticipate by the end of May that uh, we'll have bids and then mm -hmm. we can decide the building committee, which is overseeing the, the roofs and roads and air conditioning electricity upgrade is uh, uh, all grow project. Mm -hmm. We anticipate that then we'll be able to okay, make some decisions yeah. and we're, you know, we're, like I said, it's a whiskers length of mm -hmm. margin right now, but we still are cautiously optimistic that we'll be able to mm -hmm. do those roofs uh, yeah. this uh, this summer. Mm -hmm. It's really important because you have a window. You can't do it when you got the children and the teachers right. uh, and, and the schools. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a process that uh, uh, is heavy construction. Yeah. And okay. so we'd be looking the day after school closes to start, and mm -hmm. we'd be looking to the you know, 15th to 20th of August to be ready and then for school to start. Mm -hmm. And there might be still some non-substantial things to do, uh, you know, putting trim up or things like that that yeah. they still might do. Uh, but the you know, the you know, the heavy work uh, would be completed. Yeah. So we're uh, we're looking for that. The um, we we need to, we're assessing the electricity going into all grove to see if air conditioning goes in, mm -hmm. if there's enough electricity there serviced to the building. We don't think there is. Uh, that's what the engineering study shows. So now we're looking, uh, we're working with Eversource to see 
what needs to happen, and then we're on the mm -hmm. mercy of their timetable. So okay. I'm. So you're I'm, just waiting on them. I'm, yeah, and I'm not as optimistic that we can do that this summer. Okay. So we may not have the air conditioning in Oak Grove this summer. Okay. We'd like to. But it's still on the table. It's on the table. It just would be next year. Yeah. So. Or, you know, it's, it's less intrusive than, you know, roof work. If That's it's true. something that we could do during the fall, I mean, if that made sense, then, you know, we've yeah. talked to the educators, of course, but I mean, mm -hmm. if, if that made sense, the committee might choose to do that. But okay. uh, sometimes you're just better, you know, if you're making an omelet, you crack all the eggs <laughs> at the same time and just... Yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's yeah. basically where we are on the, uh, so all Grove uh, roof, uh, we are hopeful, middle school, high school, uh, hopeful, both mm -hmm. of those this year. Mm -hmm. uh, not so hopeful on the electric air conditioning project, but we yeah. haven't given up on it. And mm -hmm. we will, if we don't do it this year, we will do it next year. Perfect, sounds good. So tell me about the Hartford Foundation grant. Yeah, the, um, so uh, the Hartford Foundation uh, is, uh, a uh, charity organization that uh, has 28 towns, I believe, that are in their service area, mm -hmm. East Grammy being one. They spoke with uh, myself and the uh, and Rich Galuccio, who is the uh, chair of the Commission on Aging, about uh, do is there any projects in town that we had, and mm -hmm. and Rich actually and the Commission on Aging took the lead on hooking us up together. Okay. And so then we said, hey, well, we wanted to upgrade the, uh, the kitchen in the senior community center, oh, nice. uh, tiles, mm -hmm. uh, ceiling tiles and roof tiles. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean, not roof tiles, floor tiles and ceiling tiles. <laughs> and, uh, and, and reface or paint uh, the cabinets to update them uh, mm -hmm. and change the surface, uh, uh, which is, uh, from 1990 and is well worn and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, we bought appliances we bought seven or eight years ago, so besides replacing mm -hmm. sinks and garbage disposals, the refrigerator, the stove, mm -hmm. the dishwasher, they're all you know, in really good shape and mm -hmm. well maintained. And um, so uh, we did an estimate and uh, it looks like it'd be about a $30,000 project. $15,000 will be what we will talk to the town about in middle June. Uh, because we'll have a town meeting to close out year-end accounts, and mm -hmm. we also, any capital projects that the schools or the town want to bring to the town meeting, we will yep. do so. We would anticipate that we would bring a proposal uh, for $15,000 of capital for our share. It's a 50% mm -hmm. grant okay. for our share yeah. of, of the uh, of the project. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're really excited that uh, that the uh, Hartford Foundation has given us a $15,000 grant, and yeah. it's, uh, it will help us um, to uh, modernize the kitchen. Mm -hmm. More people will want to use the kitchen. Uh, it'll, it'll help. It helps seniors. It helps uh, uh, veterans groups. Mm -hmm. It helps the Lions who put on dinners. It helps all sorts mm -hmm. of uh, women's club. Yeah. Uh, Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, uh, Nourish My Soul Group, Nourish My Soul group the, uh, the uh, culinary cuisine. The junior chef? The, well, the junior chef, but also yes, the one culinary like cuisine that, uh, that uh, we do, do a quarterly basis. Yes, uh, so uh, we're, we're really happy, pleased, and thankful for the, the uh, dollars from the Hartford Foundation. Uh, mm -hmm. It means that uh, we have $15,000 less that we need to spend on the project uh, mm -hmm. yeah. and still get the product that we want. Mm -hmm. So it's great. So thanks to the That's Harper exciting. Foundation. That's fantastic. We have Memorial Day coming up and really quickly here, like yeah. today anyway. Yeah. The, so two uh, weeks the, away. What yeah. are the plans for Memorial Day in town? Well, the uh, first thing I wanted to just talk about with Memorial Day is uh, whether it's Christmas, Easter, Passover, whatever the holiday or, or day that's important to people, mm -hmm. um, gets pretty commercialized. Mm -hmm. And you know, July 4th gets commercialized, but that's okay because July 4th is a celebration mm -hmm. of our independence. Um, but Memorial Day isn't a you know mattress sale and a grill sale. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a you know it's not a well, it is a three-day weekend, but the purpose of Memorial Day is, is not 
for, you know, let's get out of work. It's, mm -hmm. the purpose was in the two years after the Civil War, it was started to memorialize the 600,000 soldiers on, combined on, either, on both sides mm -hmm. that died in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So it's to remember those folks that have died for freedom mm -hmm. protecting us. Mm -hmm. And so I always, you know, in the Let's Talk Turkey, I always put a paragraph in about that just to remind people of the real meaning of Memorial Day. Yeah. And I'm doing the same thing now. Uh, but the, um, there's over 1.8 million citizen sh soldiers that sacrificed their lives for the freedoms that we have. Mm -hmm. To be able to decide not to vote at a referendum. <laughs> to have a let's talk turkey that tells all the different things that go on in the town, mm -hmm. uh, topics of the newspapers. They, you know, whether you like Rush Limbaugh or you don't like Rush Limbaugh, mm -hmm. you have the freedom to listen to that or not listen to it. And, and, you know, and if there's somebody on the left that you, that you listen to, you have the right to choose to listen or not to listen. Right. It all came at a cost. Mm -hmm. And the cost is 1.8 million citizen soldiers. Mm -hmm. So I, um, um, I always uh, remind folks of that, and I'm reminding you now. And one of the things you'll see in the Let's Talk Turkey that hits everybody's doorsteps on Saturday mm -hmm. uh, is a, um, a lengthy article, but it's an article from a mother who lost her son in, the, uh, uh, in Operation um, Freedom. Uh, in 2005, mm -hmm. and she just talks about the effect, uh, he, so he was in the service, talks about the effect of the, his loss to the family and what Memorial Day means to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw, I was made aware of it, uh, I happen to know, personally know the, the mother, Lisa Philippon, uh, and she's also a uh, staff member of Resilience Girls Here, of which I'm a, one of them steering committee and founding members of, mm -hmm. and who's done, uh, and Resilience Grows Here works with uh, veterans and active military and their families mm -hmm. regarding special things such as mental health and those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So anyways, uh, when, I, when I was made aware of the heartfelt letter that she wrote, I decided that the right thing to do was to get more people to just understand what the real meaning of Memorial Day is, mm -hmm. and I published the full. It's like a page and a half. Uh, mm -hmm. So anyway, so um, uh, Memorial Day is a lot of different things. And enjoy it with your family and enjoy it with a picnic. But sometime during that three-day period, maybe it's during the Memorial Day parade when you're, uh, you're uh, either in the parade or watching the parade mm -hmm. that you think about it and think about the folks that have fought for our freedom and give us the ability to live the way we do. Mm -hmm. So my thanks to those folks. On, um, on Memorial Day Monday, uh, we, which is May 27th, uh, if you're in the parade, uh, so it's going to be the traditional parade, and it'll start uh, at uh, Nicholson Road uh, in front of the cemetery, so that's where everybody will gather if you're marching. Mm -hmm. uh, then at 10 o'clock sharp, we will start. Uh, we always do uh, uh, taps uh, at uh, the flagpole and where the uh, um, markers are, mm -hmm. and then we take the parade across the street of Route 20, go mm -hmm. up School Street, mm -hmm. stop at the Center Street uh, Cemetery, and again, there's another memorial ceremony. Mm -hmm. And then we go um, across the street uh, of Route 187 and into the green area, the lawn area, that is in between the town hall and the ambulance building. Mm -hmm. And uh, there'll be a relatively short ceremony. Um, it's uh, it's uh, really, I mean, there are, uh, hopefully we get sun, uh, yeah. and, uh, and we get a good turnout, uh, both in marchers and in folks mm -hmm. that are visitors, but it's good old t small time parade, and mm -hmm. uh, it's a very nice Memorial Day parade. And then uh, after the short ceremony, then people are able to go on and do what they do, but uh, we thank the East Grammy Lions Club for ever since parades have been put on, it seems. The Lions have sponsored the parade and organized mm -hmm. it. So we thank them and all the different organizations, uh, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, uh, Little League, uh, Fire Department, Ambulance Association, mm -hmm. 
police all that participate and uh, and make it a you know a very nice service and ceremony and morning for folks. Mm -hmm. So 10 o'clock sharp, uh, line the, the parade route or get a chair over at the, uh, uh, over by the uh, green area, mm -hmm. by the Ambulance uh, Association and the town. And if it's rainy, where do you post that? So people know like by nine o'clock you'll post? Well, uh, the good news is that we're taking any decision-making away so okay. if it's raining and, you, and we're, we're going to meet at 10 o'clock at the senior community center okay. and have uh, a brief uh, ceremony inside okay uh, if it's not raining stay outside okay oh, so, so no matter what no matter what there will be uh, uh, no matter what there will be a Memorial Day service okay. so whether awesome. it's uh, if it's raining it's going to be in the senior mm -hmm. community center and I, I don't think they're finished yet, but um, but people can take a look at the the start of the work of the mo the memorial. Um, the rocks are in place around the veterans memorial. Yes, the uh, veterans group in town, of which is a volunteer group that uh, that meet and has have done some really nice things in town, including. Mm -hmm organizing the flags that uh, go up and down and a lot of different things, charitable things. They do a scholarship every year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one of the things they came to us and they said, we'd like to make it a little bit more meaningful with the flagpole. Mm -hmm. So there was the you know, evergreens that were there. We, uh, DPW uh, ripped out the evergreens. Mm -hmm. We put down some, uh, some marble chips uh, so that there's low maintenance. Uh, yeah. and big rocks on top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, there's six rocks there, eventually each rock will have a plaque on it that mm -hmm. will say what uh, the particular branch of the service. So, you know, yeah. Army, Air Force, Navy, mm -hmm. Marines, Merchant Marine, and Coast Guard. Yeah. Wow, got them all. <laughs> Usually I have to think about it. So the uh, so anyway, so we're, we're doing that. And as you, as you, and that's, that's at the flagpole, uh, and you'll see it at the parade. And uh, you know, throughout town, whether we're paving or, or repairing things or taking trees down or maintaining the greenway mm -hmm. or doing things around town hall, we you know take a lot of pride to reflect the community's pride mm -hmm. in being residents of East Grand. That's great. So, you services commission, you have. A, I need you know, volunteers. Need some help? I need some help. The uh, youth services uh, commission. It is uh, like all our boards, uh, with the exception of the Board of Selectmen, which is a paid first selectman, is uh, by uh, is by uh, manned by volunteers. And uh, the uh, so youth services, so we've got so uh, two openings on uh, youth services. Uh, okay. I'm making a public uh, plea for it. Uh, if you, you know, if if you you don't have to be a parent, but if you're a parent and You've got children that are still of the age where a youth services commission are looking at the different services that we can provide to mm -hmm. the children, uh, the different uh, you know different education things that we can do. I mean, we co-sponsor the drug awareness every year. Mm -hmm. uh, we also through the youth services commission, it's a separate board, the juvenile review board, mm -hmm. but the juvenile review board gives a youngster that's made a, a lousy decision mm -hmm. um, an opportunity not to get a record. So there's a lot of different things that youth services are directly or indirectly re involved with. And I need a couple of volunteer. Uh, uh, and like I said, you can be a parent or you don't have to be a parent. You just want to care about the community and you want to, if you're on the Youth Services Commission, you want to care about the youth and what programs can we do. And, and you know, we sponsor youth action committees uh, that are in the middle school and the high school. Uh, where it's just terrific uh, uh, opportunities for students to volunteer after school to uh, to do some projects, but also feel about uh, learn more about leadership, learn about community, learn about giving back a little bit. So it's all really, really good stuff, and it starts with the Youth Services Commission. And I need two volunteers. So uh, if uh, you would like to know more about it, please give me a call at the selectman's office or. You can send me an email at uh, info at egtownhall.com, okay. uh, and I'll be more than happy to uh, to uh, discuss it with you and let you know some of the things that uh, that go on regarding mm -hmm. that. Now, uh, you know, one of the, the as I mentioned, the the address, uh, the email address. If you want to talk to the town specifically, mm -hmm. 
it, you can go online mm -hmm. and you can see, you know, there are all the specific telephone numbers and departments. Mm -hmm. If you want to just put a comment in or you're not sure what to do, mm -hmm. use the info, I-N-F-O at E-G townhall.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, within 24 hours, we'll get back to you on that. Usually it's a lot quicker than 24 mm -hmm. hours, but for uh, 24 hours. So if you have a question, when's the dump open? Uh, you know, you can go online and see the hours of the mm -hmm. dump, but if you don't want to do that, you can email, we'll be glad to do that. Uh, you have a concern about the, the pothole uh, in my uh, in my road. Uh, mm -hmm. and certainly, use the info at EG Town Hall, and you know we'll be more than happy to to evaluate it, take care of it. So what I'm saying is, there's a real good tool for you that you don't even have to pick up the phone for, mm -hmm. that you can electronically contact us. So I've got a pothole in my town, mm -hmm. on my road, on my street. So what I do is is I put an info in, and I live on South Main Street over by the way, it wouldn't be the town that would do South Main Street as highway, but that's, I live on South yeah. Main Street, so I'm using myself as a hypothetical. Mm -hmm. So I've got a pothole down between, uh, between numbers two and number six South Main Street. And I uh, just wanted you to know that you have somebody take a look at it. Mm -hmm. So we get that email. If it's over the weekend, mm -hmm. on first thing on Monday, we contact DPW. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm making this up because it's a state highway. Yes. Uh, we get DPW to uh, take a look at it and correct the issue. Mm -hmm. Same person, different approach. I'm so mad about that darn pothole. I'm going to go on Facebook and I'm going to go on social media and I'm going to say, you know, there's a huge pothole in the middle of, of South Main Street and nobody's taking care of it and nobody cares. <laughs> and I feel really good because I've just vented. Well, yeah. I, it didn't fix anything. <laughs> didn't fix a darn thing because you didn't go to the people that can fix it. Yeah. So if you like to vent on social media, have at it. Yeah. If you like to, and people say, well, geez, Jim, you look at social media sometimes, so I figure if I put something in, <laughs> then you know, you'll see it. Well, how about info at EG Town Hall, yeah. and I guarantee I see it, mm -hmm. and I guarantee that we'll take action. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and the action may not be exactly the way you want to resolve, but we'll right. take action, and we'll explain to you what we can do and what we can't do. So, do you want to vent? Get the venom out and yeah. uh, get you know all that energy out, or do you want to get something done? Yeah, I leave it to you to pick out how you <laughs> want to handle that. I know I can help you more if you use the electronic info at Yeah, sounds like a good plan. I I appreciate that. I won't well, tell I'm, you about I'm, that. I've I've vented a couple times to this program. <laughs> That's okay. If you, Get it out. <laughs> I, I won't vent about the potholes on Spoonville because I know you're going to get that road fixed. We, this year, we so. sure are. We sure are. <laughs> two weeks from now, uh, you'll be you'll be telling me uh, how beautiful the road is. Two three weeks from now, you'll be telling me how beautiful the roads are. Uh, the um, by the way, with the road comes uh, you know in Seymour, we've handed out speeding tickets and we've handed out tickets to trucks mm -hmm. that have used it incorrectly because yeah. they're not supposed to use it anymore. We'll do the same thing on Spoonville. Yeah. As, as you know, as you increase the condition of the roads, yeah. uh, drive faster. People drive faster, <laughs> uh, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we we have targeted Seymour, mm -hmm. and we'll target Spoonville, and we'll write tickets, and yeah. we'll get people to be safe. Uh, and uh, you know those little signs that we have up that are supposed to let you know how mm -hmm. fast you're going so that you would slow down isn't to see, hey, can I crack 50 right. uh, before I have to hit the stop sign? It's, hey, I'm at 40 now and I should be at 30. Let me get down to 30. Yeah. But the police will help you with that uh, with tickets. That's good because there are also then people walking and biking and all of that on Spoonville and it's a narrow road. Yeah, so. it's, or, it's, and, and many roads in town too, not just but, Spoonville. But, but Spoonville is a busy road with a lot of streets on and off of it and a lot of people that like to walk it and there's no sidewalks and there's not enough right away to put sidewalks right. on there. Uh, so it's uh, uh, whether you're taking the dog out, yeah, just be safe mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and follow the, the rules of the road. Mm -hmm. So on another note, we have a hazardous waste collection date coming up. 
Yeah, the uh, actually, uh, if you, uh, it'll be a Let's Talk Turkey. The calendar will be Let's Talk Turkey this mm -hmm. uh, Saturday. It's already on the town website. And from now until middle October, there's 11 opportunities. And it's not just East Granby, uh, mm -hmm. but it is we, we get the service through the MDC. So any MDC hazardous waste day on Saturday, mm -hmm. residents from East Granby can go. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, I don't think I have the specific information with me, but the, uh, but it's in Let's Talk Turkey, and I think we're October 13th, but you don't have to wait until October 13th, where for the last several years we've done it with Windsor Locks right. at the Windsor Locks garage. Uh, you don't have to wait for that. If you've got, you know, you're doing your spring house cleaning, and you've got all sorts of, you know, paint, and you know, there's other ways to get rid of paint, but paint mm -hmm. and other chemicals and things like that. Mm -hmm. There's a list on the website for the mdc.com, the mdc.com, okay. and it'll be also in the information that's here. It'll give you a list, and let's talk to her. It'll give you a list of the items that uh, you can bring. Mm -hmm. And from now until October 26th or 24th, whatever date it is, mm -hmm. you're gonna have the opportunity to do so. Okay. You don't have to wait. Okay, perfect. And, and, you, can go, and you can go twice. <laughs> you can, go, you can okay. go this weekend coming up and then you can go on October 12th. You know? Yeah, we need for your second service. The town pays for that service. It runs us about $8,000 a year. And we have RCC permits coming up. RCC permits are coming out uh, July 1st. Uh, you, as always, you have until the end of July to purchase the new $50 okay. Can you permit go before fee. July 1st to get it? No. No, no. you have to wait until July 1st. You have to wait first. until okay. July 1st. And we always set extra staffing up and to, you know, make it easy and everything. So either to purchase a permit or to, uh, to renew, you go to where the guard shack is, where the compactor mm -hmm. is and they'll take care of it for you. Okay. Uh, it's a $50 check made out to the town of East Granby. Um, recycling is free, mm -hmm. uh, but if you're getting rid of municipal solid waste, fancy name for garbage, mm -hmm. uh, uh, then you need to pay the $50 fee. That $50 fee has not gone up. The $50 fee is the same as it was when it first started. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we also have dog license renewals coming up. Yeah, the dogs, uh, dog licenses are being renewed. Uh, the, uh, it's uh, uh, the month of June, and I'm just looking for the specific information. Uh, all dogs six months and older must be licensed by June 30th. The cost is $8 for dogs who are, who are altered, 19 for those who are not. A dollar uh, late fee per dog will be charged each month for those who are late starting July 1st. All dogs, so June 30th is the last day that you have uh, because June is the licensing month. Okay. Um, you can license by mail and the instructions are on how to do that or in Let's Talk Turkey. Also, you can renew online uh, and it's, those, that's also on, on, uh, on, you can't do the initial entry, but you can uh, do the renewals online. Uh, and like I said, it's in Let's Talk Turkey. And um, there is a convenience fee because you have to use a credit card and it's a dollar seventy five convenience fee. But everything's laid out on page three of the upcoming Let's <laughs> Doctor. Okay. And Newgate Prison, I it, I believe it's open because I know the last sure bat talk this Thursday, which you know, this may not air before the bat talk happens, but they have other stuff coming up as well. Oh yeah, it's uh, it's terrific. It's the second year that it's open, but it's the first year that's full hours. Uh, and it's Thursdays, Mondays, uh, uh, from uh, Thursday through Monday, uh, 10 a.m. to 4.30 uh, p.m. Mm -hmm. uh, May through October. Yes. So uh, the um, free admission for Connecticut residents uh, at the, any of the four state museums, but specifically the old Newgate State Museum, mm -hmm. on Sunday, May 19th, June 16th, July 21st, and August 18th. So it's free admission to any state museum, uh, uh, well, the four state museums, and um, in Newgate specifically, May 19th, June 16th, July 21st, and August 18th. Uh, there, June 8th is Connecticut Open House Day uh, with self-guided tours and everything. Uh, June 21st is a you know, Make Music Day from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. All sorts of information that will be in Let's Talk Turkey. Okay, good. Fantastic. I look forward to getting that. And uh, Let's Talk Turkey comes out this Saturday. Yes, And that's kind of the one for the summer, right? Otherwise, we don't Correct. get another one we until August. We don't do it until August. August. Yeah. Okay. 
something to look forward to then. Yeah, so it's a big, a big edition. Uh, there's 36 pages in this Ooh. edition, so <laughs> a lot of information. One of the things we're going to do is uh, during the summer we're going to contact the organizations and let them know that you know we are going to allow any non-town organization so it doesn't apply to Park and Rec, for example, mm -hmm. um, to have one full page flyer uh, per season, um, or per year, I guess it was a clearer mm -hmm. way of saying it. And um, so as a result, uh, folks just have to, what we find when we got the 36 pages is we've got some things that really are full page that don't need to be full page. Mm -hmm. So we'll be asking people to do a little editing because mm -hmm. it costs seventy-five dollars for every page. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a lot. So you know, if we got ten extra pages, that's seven hundred fifty dollars extra mm -hmm. that particular edition. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, we want to. I'm thrilled that people love to use Let's Talk Turkey. Hopefully, people love to read it. I yeah. know I worry about that sometimes. I mm -hmm. worry about whether you know there's just too much information in there and people just don't pay for it. Uh, it doesn't pay for them to read it, uh, or they don't want to commit the time or anything to it, or mm -hmm. that the format's not in a readable format. So we're looking at things like that, but we're also going to do a little editing so that it's a little bit more concise. Yeah. We want to support our organization. Volunteers are the 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 joy of East Granby that make East Granby the community that we are. Mm -hmm. But we got to make sure that we're not wearing people out. Yeah, <laughs> true. Well, thank you for going over everything, and uh, we'll be back in June. Yes, we will. To talk about more stuff, more more budgets, I'm sure. I, I, we're about the end of the budget. That, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a good, good. thing. We'll talk, we probably will talk about uh, proposed uh, capital items and anything we can do to keep the town organized and informed. My mission always has been, that's why we have TV, that's why we have bigger editions of Let's Talk Turkey, that's why we had a revamped uh, uh, website and, and continue to do so. We want to continue to communicate with the community, make it easy for folks to communicate back with us, mm -hmm. looking at better ways to, to serve and be, you know, sometimes people say, well, geez, you could be more transparent. Well, perhaps, but the other part of that is that the information is out there. We want you to know where it is so that you can educate yourself on the issues and concerns, and we can listen to what it is that you have to say. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Well, Enjoy. This concludes our May edition of Town Topics, and we'll see everyone in June. See you in June.